Hi there everyone, my name is Sean Woolley, Managing Director of Cloud9 Spain. My name is Dominic Maroshek, I'm the Sales Director of Cloud9 Spain. What we thought we'd do today is just have a quick chat about Marbella's super prime areas, um, which means those areas that are considerably, um, have considerably more value than other areas in the region. Yeah, um, exactly. But everywhere is the same, like London prime example, of course, you have outer London, inner London, then you have the super, super, super prime, which is where all the uh, the millionaires buy. And something similar is happening here in Marbella. We've got probably four or five areas, I would guess, although we'll talk about that now, that really do attract the the, the top people in terms of, yeah. of, of their profile, in terms of their their worth and their wealth. So, Don, what would what would you sort of consider to be a a super, super prime area? Yeah. Well, let's talk about Puente Romano. Yeah. Puente Romano is a residential area. Mm -hmm. It's actually called Marina de Puente Romano, which has three uh, developments, three blocks, mm -hmm. each named after different gardens: okay. the Japanese, Persian, and Andalusian garden. Yeah. And that has just become the hottest area in the Golden Mile. So would you say out of all the areas, and, and I think when we talk about Marbella, we have to also include areas that might not necessarily fall within the Marbella postcode, but essentially are known as Marbella havens, places like La Zagaleta, El Madrena, Sierra Blanca, Sierra Blanca, Sierra Blanca Nueva Andalusia, whatever. But you're saying that you're super, super proud. If you had to choose one, you would say- It would be Puente Romano. Puente Romano. Well, Puente Romano in the last four years. Now I'm just gonna have to justify why. Yeah. Sierra Blanca, mm -hmm. for instance, has been always the best address in the Golden Mile. It mm -hmm. maintained a very solid standard throughout the years, whether it was in recession, where the market picked up, it was very attractive and it kept itself within that box. Okay. But the real growth and interest has been in Puente Romano, where the prices increased, I would say double, if not more, during the last four years. And why is that? Is there one th single thing you could say is the reason? Well, I always like to say that Marbella Club Hotel and Puente Romano are like the heartbeat of Marbella. Because they're the two... It's uh, like the for, epicenter. For, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know Marbella and the Golden Mile, they're the two five-star hotels, almost like sister hotels, yeah. aren't they? That are right in the best part of the Golden Mile that connects Marbella town to the Jet Set Marina of exactly. Puerto Venus. Okay. And Marbella Club Hotel was the hotel. Yeah, that's what started Marbella. It, exactly, it's yeah. why calling it the heartbeat of Marbella makes sense, yeah. justifies it. So maybe because of its fab location, as we spoke about, but also the proximity to hotel, bar and restaurants. Mm -hmm. So the entire night scene in Punta Romano with yeah. the restaurants, the clubs, the bars, is very, it's and a beach. very social, attractive social area for people. Yeah. So it's hip, it's dynamic. And I think that's what people love about it, that they can walk to a micro environment community, community really isn't it? exactly where crazy. you've got everything you've got the beach in the day you've got the beach clubs you've got the amazing beach restaurants and then at night it tennis transforms courts itself. yeah gym obviously yeah. the hotel facilities which you can also use so it offers a lot it's very rich in its micro community now Marbella sorry Puente Romano area on the Golden Mile has always been high end it's always been popular it's always been a great place yes. to go it's always been a five-star area but I think for me anyway the the one thing that's changed it is obviously the upgrade to the Puente Romano, but along with that was the was the influence of Nobu. Yes, of course. Um, Nobu took over, I think it was 60 or 40 suites. Yeah. And that obviously... Brings, and it's a Nobu hotel yeah, within Puente Romano. It brings now. a different spectrum of clients yeah. Yeah. back to uh, Puente Romano, which obviously broadens their, their spectrum of clients. But Nobu is an international brand. Obviously Puente Romano is a brand that we know here in Marbella and that people who've been to Marbella will will know, but Nobu obviously is an international brand. I think they have they have um, presence in every continent. They have some serious people backing yeah. them. Is it Robert De Niro? Yeah, is exactly. there one of their well, I think I he's think like, a shareholder, isn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. And the main face. And the main face, mm -hmm. grumpy face. But um, Nobu is a is a very famous um, Japanese um, based a restaurant chain, isn't it? Yeah. Effectively, it used to yeah. be, and now it's it's launched hotels, various things. So the Nobu Hotel within the Puente Romano has attracted a huge amount of attention uh, for itself, obviously, but also for the area. And I think it was since Nobu came into the Puente Romano that the whole thing has just gone. Yeah, it exploded. Yeah, it has. Well, just to explain it a little bit more thoroughly, uh, when I started selling real estate in the Golden Mile, that was about 60 years ago, I looked at a two bedroom apartment in the Andalusian garden, which mm -hmm. is the cheapest garden 
okay. in the Marina. You can still walk to the beach. You can still yeah, walk to the hotel. It has everything. It's, it's not there. It's the one that's the closest to the main road, although yeah. you don't really hear road noise. But okay, that apartment, two bed, mm-hmm. was priced at six hundred thousand euros. Bargain. Bargain. Yeah. It is now, a bargain yeah. Now, those same properties go for one point eight. Wow. And that's how many there. years ago? Four years? Four years? Four, five? Well, six this years was ago. six years ago. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good return though if you've invested then, isn't it? 100%. And that was what a lot of people thought because the demand was huge, mm. but the supply was minimal. Therefore, that drove up the prices exponentially in yeah. this case. Yeah. But then many people started seeing the trend in refurb their property yeah. and making it look nice and putting it on the market for triple, nearly triple the amount they bought it for. Yeah. So it started to saturate the market and that has happened in the last two years where the Punta Romano market has become relatively saturated mm-hmm. and it's difficult to find good price properties there. And also well reformed properties because we have a developer friend, don't we, who all he does is buy um, stock in the best blocks in Punta Romano, the best phases and then um, reform them beautifully to a really, really high yeah. standard. And he puts them back on the market at three, four million euros and he sells them yeah. because they're done so well and people who want to be there, who have the money to be there, don't just yeah. buy there. So the prices of two years ago, completely refurbished, are the prices now not completely refurbished? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I always like to give the best example because I was part of this uh, in the Persian garden. Was it the Persian? No, it was Japanese garden, which is the best garden. Mm-hmm. Frontline, two bedroom apartment, mm-hmm. 130 square meters, mm-hmm. was sold for 2.8 million in its original, rustic, outdated style. Cracking. But because of the, the um, publicity of the meters. place has got people want to be there. You know, yeah. it, it, it is like the, the Cali- it's become the California of Europe again. Um, where you've got these designer names and these, you know, like Nobu coming into the area, coming into that particular little section of the Golden Mile, and people want a part of it, and people yeah. are prepared to pay. To and be those a part are of it. the sort of clients that do are not petty whatsoever, because yeah. if you go quality to price ratio, mm-hmm. it's very minimal. Yeah, there are people that come there and say, I don't care if I oh, spend three million on a two hundred square meter apartment. Yeah. For them, it's nothing. For them, it's like peanuts. Yeah, and they're so only that, going to use it six weeks yeah, of the year. So those know. are really another set of clients which... But that's what we're talking about. We are talking about the super prime. So we are talking about that type of client. And, and I think you're right. I think the, the Puente Romano has, has stolen a march. But of course, the problem that the Puente Romano has is it has a lack of other type of stock. 100%. It is really maybe the odd one or two villas. Because it's a beachside area, um, a lot of that beachside hasn't been developed. Land is, is still owned by predominantly Arab families. Yeah. And also a lot of it can't be developed. So what you have, you have the existing apartments, but other than that, there isn't really a huge amount of choice. So that's why I think the apartments have, have um, gone up so considerably in terms of value is because there's, yeah. there's nothing else. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a small period, a small pause, like a little fluctuation mm-hmm. when they announced Project Uno, which was a neighboring development, also oh, Frontline yeah. Beach, modern apartments, which yeah. were to beat the apartments of Puente Romano. Yeah, so today's standards, but yeah, yeah, a lot of people bought into that, but because it yet hasn't been realized and, and there is no real mm-hmm. progress happening, people pulled out and mm-hmm. refocused their energy on Puente Romano. Because it's something that exists, it's yeah. there, it's set and it's beautiful. Yeah. What other, would you call, uh, super prime areas are there in Marbella? Before we venture too further afield, what else is sort of Golden Mile? Well, Sierra Blanca. Sierra Blanca, yeah. yeah. Um, and would you include Cascada de Hamohan in that? 100%. Cascada de Hamohan is a little um, little enclave, um, private. It's probably more private than... I than think it it's is. It's more secluded, more private and, and more, more ample. Se- and more secure, would you say? Yes. Because it has the 24-hour security. Yes. The problem that Sierra Blanca has, if it has a problem, is that they're all public roads. So you can't just put a gate at the front and stop people coming in. So the public have to have access. So they, they have what they, they call soft security. Yeah, don't they? exactly. They do put barriers on every entrance. And yeah. from 8 o'clock in the evening onwards, you cannot enter. Okay. And okay. you really have to be a persistent bugger. Call the security. Go down to the security. Tell him that you want to enter. He yeah. puts your license plate number on a paper. Checks who you are. And they do do exam. I've noticed actually going that. there recently that the security is, is very good. In fact, if you're, if you're parked outside a villa, 
uh, waiting for someone, security will come yeah, find you. And, and they'll like, be what like, are you doing? What are you doing? What's, what's going on? And that's, that's pretty reassuring. Yeah. We actually had an open <clears> evening <throat> there um, a few weeks ago and the clients wanted to be left alone in the villa with their friends drinking wine, eating yeah, pizza. I so I waited at the bottom of the drive and the, um, you know, I told the security guard that yeah, everything's fine, the, the guys are having a good time and they insisted on going into the house yeah. to, uh, to oh, make wow, sure that really? they, they were, that I hadn't locked them in the, uh, in the basement. <laughs> Which of course I had, no I haven't. Um, so, okay, so we're talking Sierra Blanca. The difference I think between the, the Golden Mile and Sierra Blanca and then maybe other areas that we're gonna discuss is the, the price of the land, isn't it? Because yeah. People can spend 10, 20, 30 million in Sierra Blanca. They'll get an amazing house, don't get me wrong, it's an amazing house, but it'll be on a fairly small plot yeah. of land. In relation to other areas. In, in relation yeah. to other areas. So it, it, because you have pretty much instant access to Marbella, the, the town and the lovely beaches. And do and great, you do have great sea views. From and you do have great sea views. And you are on top of, of where you want to be, Bonus, yeah. Marbella, Golden Mile. So you pay for, yeah, you pay, you pay a privilege um, for, for, for being there. But the, the land price is, you know, for a thousand square meters in Sierra Blanca, you're looking at a million. A million, yeah. Oh well, it it really depends. It's between nine hundred and fifty up to one point two okay. at thousand two hundred, depending on the location, the size, and the views. Yeah, and that's before you put your house on it. Yeah. Or bought the house. So, so the minimum plot size is two thousand square meters in Sierra Blanca. Yeah. So if you are looking for a plot there, you are immediately at a starting price of two million. Two million for the yeah. land. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, Sierra Blanca is is. A fantastic area, yeah, and I like it because of the location. Because you are you know, one one way down there, you're in Mabea, then you're. Do you in know what I've realized in the past three years that there was a dynamic shift in the Costa del Sol, especially in Nueva Andalusia and Marbella, where people were buying all the houses, refurbing them, and flipping them. Mm -hmm. And Sierra Blanca really hasn't caught on with that. No, and the reason being is that the owners, mostly people who live in the house for many years, 10, 20 years, have an emotional attachment to the house yeah. and price it unrealistically, leaving no leverage, no no gain leverage yeah, for okay. investors to come, tear it up, rebuild it and sell it. And also, they're not, I would say about 80, 90% of them are not that old, are they? They're probably within 10 to 15 years old. Yeah, but they, they do look outdated though. For, for the modern taste. I think when you're spending that sort of money, you want exactly what you want, don't you? So exactly. a lot of people think, do you know what, for another million, I'll just change it all. Yeah. So it, that's the problem that Sierra Blanca really hasn't caught on. And I was told that 30% of Sierra Blanca is on the resale market. Really? Yeah. 30%. I'm okay. going to have to verify that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I was told by my colleague who works in the Golden Mile, it's 30%. Okay. Most of them sell speculatively. Mm -hmm. hoping because the market is stable that they can get, achieve a selling price beyond their measures, yeah. dreams, etc. And only a few sell out of necessity. But mm. then when you do get that one client that's selling out of necessity, you get a good price on the property you buy, mm -hmm. you can refurbish it and sell it. Like we've experienced, yep. I know of a house that's been sold for two million and a guy sold it for three times the amount. Yep. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what other areas would you consider to be super prime? Well, Zagaleta is surely yeah, one of them. I would say Zagaleta. So I think we have Sierra Blanca, Zagaleta, and Puente Romano, which are uber prime. So La Zagaleta, for those of you who aren't too aware of it, is um, set back from behind San Pedro and Puerto Banus on the Ronda Road. So it's about a 10 minute drive down to the, um, the amenities of the coast. But what you do get with that is, okay, a little bit more out of the way, but you do get the land. So, oh, yeah. you know, for the price that um, it may cost you to buy a, a, a thousand square meters in, um, in Sierra Blanca, you will probably end up with 4,000 square meters or, or more probably. In, um, in La Zagaleta. Again, amazing views. And La Zagaleta, again, because you have the land around you, what they have done, the developers, is they've made it into a, a hyper exclusive country club environment so you have your own private golf course you have an equestrian center you helicopter have fishing pads, lakes, helicopter pad uh, and, and a security clubhouse. guards walking yeah. around with guns it's true i mean you cannot enter it without showing your passport it's like going yeah, to another it's, country it's hard to get in you need to show your passport and you need to be pre-registered they yeah, need to know do. where exactly you're going to yeah. so it's it's pretty so those are so those people who are really concerned about security like certain global politicians or whatever uh, pop stars. In fact, we don't know who lives in there. No. It's so secret. No. We don't there are there even rumors is. that Putin has a house there. Because there is a house. Heaven forbid. But no, exactly. There is a house that has a, a logo outside with VP, 
a big VP and it's Vladimir oh, really? Putin. Oh my god. So people okay. started to hypothesize that maybe he bought in that. Yeah. No one's no one's hundred percent. But the interesting thing about that land is that it was the old Adnan Khashoggi hunting ground, yeah. isn't it? So it has a history. Um, and then just over the road you have our Madre now, which used to be the, the goldsmith country. Do you, where... you want to say who he was? No. Um, <laughs> you can look at it on Google. But it's it's land that, that has a history. Um, Diana, Princess of Wales, spent a lot of time in Madrinel mm -hmm. um, with the goldsmith uh, family. So, you know, it, it, it yeah, it, people know it and they, they, they like it. Would you say Madrinel is super prime? I wouldn't put super in front of it. Okay. I would say it's prime prime. Okay, so so Zagaleta is It's the, very is, close is to being one. super prime, but it's not yeah. pr super prime. It's prime prime. Madrinel is very similar. Uh, in terms of land and look and feel, Madrinel is very similar to Zagaleta. And we've got another video that um, that we're doing, which is, is about the differences between the two. So if you want to know more about that, because very often when clients look at one, they'll look at the other. But okay, so we have so far, in terms yeah. of super prime, we have um, Puente Romano, Golden Mile yes. area. We have Sierra Blanca and we have La Zagaleta. Yes. Anywhere else. Super what prime. about Los Monteros Beachside? It has a sense of prime? exclusivity and yeah. it is prime, but it's not in the epicenter of a super okay, prime so if, area. I think we're talking about people who have got five million or more, yeah. to be honest with you. If you had five million or more, where would you look? Me? Yeah. Zagaleta. Would you? Yes. So above and beyond Sierra Blanca? Yes. Sierra Blanca, I don't want to sound too prude saying this, but mm -hmm. Sierra Blanca is more to flaunt it if you've got it, right? Yeah, what I would say as well is that Sierra Blanca, in the last three or four years, it's attracted younger millionaires and billionaires, yeah, like entrepreneurs, tech, tech. entrepreneurs. Yeah. So online gaming and stuff like that. Yeah. Those kinds of people, the, the older money, no disrespect, but the older, more mature money, people who have maybe retired from the corporate world or built their businesses and maybe sold them yeah. in the 50, 60, they tend to go to Zagaleta, yes. don't they? Maybe exactly. because they want the It's more recluse. Place. Yeah, it, it is, it is. And that's why I would choose that area. Cause... Well, because you're a recluse and you've made your money. Yeah, mm. I see your money of the good days. <laughs> no, but I like peace and tranquility and, and that's something that we don't go out. Peace and tranquility headlines Zagaleta. I think That's Sierra Blanca sure. is maybe more suitable for like young families if they yeah. want access to local schools because exactly. there's two or three really good schools, Golden Mile, it's Sierra Blanca. It's maybe more dynamic area. I think it is because you can very easily get to nightlife, to restaurants. Zagaleta, you've kind of got to plan your journeys unless you've got a chauffeur, which yeah. case you don't have to. I was just going to say, you don't really do <laughs> that. You have well, PRs you, doing that for you. Well, you can jump in your helicopter. Yeah, yeah. or oh, horse ride through the mountains. <laughs> to get some fresh eggs from a farmer. Do we include, I know this is a bit left field, but do we include Sotto Grande or is that, can we just not count that as Marbella? I wouldn't count it as Marbella, but I would like to note that they are creating a super prime area in La okay. Reserva de Sotto Grande, but I think that's a topic for our next discussion. Absolutely. Okay, so the three... No, no disrespect, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. You have fantastic areas like Los Monteros, mm. El Madrinal, the amazing... Nueva Andalusia, El Jarojo Alto, yeah. I love, but... They are fantastic like... areas. But if you had five, ten million, would you would you think, I want yeah. to be in... So mm. if we talk prime, prime, or super prime, as yeah. you said, yeah. we mentioned the three. If we talk in prime, prime, you have Los Monteros, you have El Jarojo Alto, yeah. you have El Madrinal, yeah. and Cascada de Camojan. I agree. So I hope yeah. that's... Um, that's Helped if you do have five or ten million or, or even more, then at least we've pointed out a few areas you should maybe in. Or even less, you can give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys. Bye. Bye bye.